This is Retirement Roadmap Radio with Mark Fricks from Master Plan Retirement Consultants. Listen in as we address your financial concerns and provide helpful solutions to put you on the path to achieving your retirement goals. And now, here is Retirement Roadmap Radio with your host, Mark Fricks. Hello again and welcome to another episode of Retirement Roadmap Radio with me, Mark Fricks, your host. And joining us today is uh, our uh, favorite co-host, Mr. Tony Shore. And today we're going to be doing a show called The ABCs of Medicare. And we know that uh, that season is upon us when it's time to um, renew your Medicare. Plus, of course, every year we have, uh, you know, thousands and thousands of people turning 65 that have to make decisions. And I, so many times uh, I, I get these, um, uh, you know, the folks that will call me up or, and say, I just don't understand Medicare. I've looked it up. I've read online. I just don't get it. You know, so we thought we would do kind of a kind of a basics of Medicare and kind of give some guidance there. And then, of course, if somebody needs further help, we certainly have the experts on hand here that can help as well. Uh, but let's bring in Mr. Shore, Tony. How goes it? Well, it sounds like a show I might be able to understand and grasp today. The ABCs of Medicare. I love it. I love it. Now, A is for Apple, and B is for, I think, Borscht, and uh, C, of course, is for Cookie. We know this. Oh, I thought C was cash. No, C is always for cookie. Didn't you watch Sesame oh, Street? Yeah. Oh. I, in, in in our business and in this show, C is probably for cash. But I'm doing great, Mark. Thanks for having good. me on the show. Glad to be here. Sounds like a good one. I know we've got uh, open enrollment coming up for Medicare. It's kind of Medicare right. season, so to speak. That's right. Open season. Yep. <laughs> open season on Medicare. So, uh, right. and that's such a big part of retirement. And yeah. I mean, healthcare is so expensive. Medicare, does, you know, what it does and doesn't cover is kind of crazy. I'm sure we'll get into that. But yeah, how have you been? Have you been busy? I have been really busy uh, until last week. Then I took some time off, went down to um, the Bahamas, spent some time down there. Wow, nice. Enjoyed some some pool time, did some writing, got got some good writing done, working on my new book. So that was good. Uh, so very oh, relaxing. Writing, and of course, writing. I write, thought you said writing. writing. I thought, oh, I'm you did, took a horseback ride while you were there? W R I T I N G. I don't have that. I'm just that trying radio to picture you, you on have. horseback. That's. Hey, I look good on horseback. Now be careful. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John. Anyway, Wayne. so that's right. So you're you're writing a new book. Yes, I am. I am. And it, it, it's um, it's kind of an update of my current one, but I'm taking a whole new approach to it. So sure, uh, hopefully it will be a bestseller. Yeah. What's will you buy the, one? Will you buy one? I will. What's the title? It's going to be available <laughs> I, on Amazon. I know. I'll buy it. Uh, what's yeah, What's yeah. the title going to be? I I just I really just have a kind of a working title, um, and I don't even remember what that is. Um, I think it's something about retirement roadmap or the road oh. to retirement. Or I something thought you like were that. going to call it the joys of working with Tony Shore. No, that's my next book. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm that's... still I'm still trying to come up with material for that. <laughs> one. What a bump. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. You left that wide open. Yeah, so. I did. I kind of threw that one up by the rim, and you just knocked it uh, in, didn't slammed you? Slammed it home. Yeah, that's right. I that's love right. it. <laughs> I love it. All right. So uh, yeah. So we we let's uh, let's get into this because we've got um, uh, you know some good stuff sure. again. I've pulled up some numbers and things like that, and we're going to try to keep it as simple as possible. And one of the reasons we're calling it the ABCs is because that's actually three of the first choices when it comes to Medicare, right? Um, you you have Part A, right? Part A is the first part of Medicare, and uh, believe it or not. If you are currently working, you are paying for that now. If you'll look on your uh, pay stub, it should say uh, Medicare Part A, or maybe it's lumped in with some other things. I don't know, but every every paycheck you get, a little bit comes out. So the good news is, is you, in most cases, don't have to pay for it in retirement. So Part A is included once, uh, as, as long as you qualify for Social Security, you know, which most folks do. Uh, or if you're married to somebody that qualifies for so, uh, Social Security, you are also eligible for Part A for no cost. Uh, so part uh, so so naturally, what, what does Part A cover, right? I think that's a great question. So 
basically just think of it mostly as facilities. So it's uh, inpatient hospital care, uh, skilled nursing facility costs. And I have to be careful with this because as, uh, as I've talked about on, on, on our radio show before is long-term care, it comes down to your pocket, but you do have some coverage over the first 30 to 60 days for skilled services and that's things like rehab and, and things of that nature so there is some coverage built in for that hospice uh, is covered lab tests surgery and a few home health care services so those come under part a but i typically just kind of say mostly facilities is covered under part a uh, so that's kind of simple to remember you know um, i wish a stood for facilities or uh, i don't know maybe we can think of something good to stand for <laughs> sure <but. laughs> A is for facilities. There sure. you go. Okay, that works. That works. I like that. Yeah. It, it um, doesn't, but that will make it work. <laughs> That's right. It's the new, you know, you've heard of the new math? <laughs> the this new, is the, the new alphabet. The new alphabet. I love it. <laughs> Uh, it's kind of a pig Latin type of alphabet. So anyway, uh, so uh, so that's part A. So uh, does, that, does that make sense, Tony? Yeah. Is that pretty it def- simple it, to play? It definitely does. So uh, <laughs> that's, uh, that's uh, Medicare part A. A is for... Part A, right? Oh, well, that's perfect. So yeah, why I don't like we that. just do that? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're going to reach in there. Uh, uh, again, I, I'm still not recovered from the Bahamas. I apologize. So. <laughs> yeah, you're still on a beach somewhere <laughs> uh, right. from your vacation. But I'm glad you finally got a vacation. I know how hard you work. So, oh, yeah. so with Medicare yeah. uh, coming up, it's good that we understand this. Uh, I think that's important. And that does make sense. What's next? Well, first of all, before before we leave Part A, you actually do not have to sign up for Part A or B if you are still working at age 65. There is no penalty if you qualify because you have a health program uh, at work uh, and a health program that, a program that qualifies. So a lot of people don't if they're still working because they, you know, they typically like their, their private insurance sure. more. So you don't part, have you know, to sign up. You don't have to start taking Medicare at 65 if you're still working. That's what you meant to say, right? That, yeah, is that not what I said? Oh, yes, I thought you correct. said I thought you said you can still sign up if you're work or you can well, you, you don't have to sign up. I get it. I get right, it. Right, right. I right. get it. Now you can, you can, yeah. uh, and some people do, but I think some people feel like that might be less doctors sure. that take Medicare. Uh, maybe they think it'd be more. I, I don't know. Maybe they've got a great health plan at work that they pay nothing sure. for. So certainly, times I've got a client that came in yesterday. He's seventy two. And is finally retiring, so he has not wow. ever signed up for, for Medicare. And, oh, wow. And his wife has not either because she's on his health plan. Um, but they'll be signing up, you know, at the end of the year. Sure. So, so, um, so, so the reason I was confused is that you said uh, you don't have to sign up. I thought, oh, you meant you're automatically signed up, which you're not. Oh. Uh, you're not automatically signed up for Medicare when right. you turn 65 unless you're – if you're receiving Social Security – then they automatically enroll you. Is that the case? Or you know, you... I, I'm not positive about that. I, I would still go in, yeah, um, and, yeah. And, and and make sure. Yeah, um, for and sure. I know, I know, Part B, you have to go in. And sign oh yeah, for, for sure. Yeah, so I think yeah. with Part A, it's probably safe to do that as well, and and assume right. that you need to do that. That's true. Um, but you know, it is interesting because, like, if you have a government job uh, and you're getting amazing benefits, my neighbor works for the state, and he right. has. His health care benefits are so low. Um, he's 70, and he's still on his employer benefits because they're mm-hmm. more, he has better coverage and they're cheaper than Medicare even. So right. Um, right. In, in his case, he hasn't enrolled in Medicare. Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah. Perf- perfect example. Yep. Yep. Very good. Uh, so we move on to Part B. Now, Part B, again, you do need to go in and sign up for, and it's very important you do it, uh, I think it's around 60 days before you turn 65. Uh, and if you don't do it within so many days after you turn 65, you will be slapped with a penalty, and it's a monthly penalty for the rest of your life. So don't miss that. If you are six to, approaching 65 and you are not on a program at work or you're coming off a program at work, do that. Sign up for Part B. You go to the Social Security website, go into Medicare, and, and, and uh, you know just follow the instructions. It's not really difficult. Now, there is a cost to Part B. Now, this year it's $148.50 a month per person. So if it's a couple, it'd be almost $300. Um, it's been that price for the last two years. They did not raise it last year or this year, I'm sorry, because of COVID. So next year they're having a double bump up. 
So it's going up to 160 five or something like that I'd have, to, I'd have to look up the exact numbers so they're gonna they go up on that almost every year and you know the the bad thing tony is they go up about the amount that the inflation raises your social security payment so you know you don't ever really get a true raise on social security because they're bumping up your part b as well so that's kind of kind of stinks but let's talk about what part b covers it does cover uh physicians fees outpatient um hospital care, uh, certain uh, parts of home health care services, uh, medical equipment, um, and a few things that Medicare Part A doesn't cover. So it's kind of the next step. So I just call this one, you know, doctor calls to an outpatient call. So it's, it's Part B. So again, you've got to sign up for it. It's not, it's not something you say, hey, I'll cover that myself. Um, it, it's, um, it's, 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 it's got to be done. Yeah, okay, so that's, that's Part B. And one thing you've got to be careful of, and, and this bites some people, um, this is one of those gotchas I like to mention sometimes. If you... Um, let's say you, you, you worked uh, up until 65, then retired, signed up for Part A and for, uh, Part B. Your Part B could cost more because it's based on what you made over the last two years or two years ago. And so you may have two years of a higher premium because maybe you made more than 100000 um, or whatever uh, it may be. And it's, it's kind of a, a rising scale. I had somebody paying... Uh, almost six hundred dollars a month for their Part B because you know their last year of work they made two hundred thousand or whatever it might have been. So um, I, be careful with that. I've, and, and if you you know if you're listening and you want to know more about that, we actually have the the form that shows you the breakdown of how much you can make and how much it raises your price. But just understand that's something again that that. Um, you know, you've got to watch out for it. If you've not budgeted for that, and if you're a couple and you're paying, you know, again, over $160 a month, that's $325, $330 a month as opposed to $280 or whatever it may be. So that's, um, again, that's um, something that, that, you know, and if you're on a fixed income entering retirement, that, that can affect you. So just be careful oh. of that. It's a, have a huge impact, really. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, people in retirement need to really watch, especially any type of health care costs. And I don't think people, I think this is something people don't take seriously enough. I know that, uh, you know, before I started working with you, Mark, I even thought, you know, oh, I'm not worried. You know, when I turn 65, I have Medicare and that'll cover it. Mm -hmm. My mm -hmm. health care yeah. costs. And, yeah, and, then, and then somebody mm -hmm. said, oh, you're going to spend uh, $250,000 over, you know, in, in health care in your, you know, in retirement or something. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I thought, that I thought Medicare the... covered it. But, uh, but yeah, you really right. have to be careful and, and make sure that you have the proper coverage or, you know, because like you said, a lot of people in retirement, no matter how much or how little money you have, it's a fixed income. It's just either bigger right. or smaller, right? Well, and, you know, Medicare Part B is going to keep going up. Um, and who yeah. knows? They may start charging for Part A one day. Uh, you know, they may say, hey, yeah. you know, people are paying in over their lifetime. But, hey, when you retire, we're going to charge you another 50 bucks or whatever. Sure. And then there's the deductibles and, the yeah. you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, too, people so. don't realize that Medicare, that's another popular misconception is that, uh, there aren't any premiums or deductibles with Medicare, but there are. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah. it'll get worse before it gets better, for sure. So. Yeah, they're going to increase those for sure to help cover the cost of the program. I mean, look at the mm -hmm. way the government's been spending. They're going to have to. Oh, yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, part uh, C. Uh, C so is part for C cookie. Thank you. Okay. Or cash. Um, <laughs> but actually, what's on Medicare, Part C is privatized Medicare. So what is called the Advantage program, Medicare Advantage. And this is offered by private insurance companies, United Healthcare, Blue Cross, um, uh, no, Sig I don't know who else is out there, Cigna, whoever it may be. And uh, based on where you live, your zip code and all that, is, it, it kind of is the cost. But a lot of times the Medicare Part C has no cost. Um, because it being privatized, um, you know, uh, instead of s sending in, you know, your, um, your claims to Medicare, it goes to, again, um, uh, United Healthcare or whatever, and they cover it, and then they get reimbursed by the government. Uh, but also they have more, uh, these are typically designed around um, a, uh, uh, what do you call it, a, a, a a grouping of doctors or, or in hospitals, you have to be part of that. Sure. You know, like an HMO uh, or something. Thank you. Or PPO and, yeah. and the, 
all those kinds of yep. things. So you do have to have particular doctors, and these are big networks. It's not like there's one doctor in town that's under that you know particular PPO or whatever it may be. So you do have copays. You may have some other things that are out of pocket that's more than perhaps would be under uh, some other programs. But again, uh, I think a lot of folks like this, um, you know, for those reasons, and because you're saving whatever, you know, supplement you did not have to pick up since you're not typically paying for Medicare Advantage, then if that's saving you, you know, $75 a month, that adds up, that could cover those co-pays. So uh, Medicare Part C or Medicare Advantage is a really good program. We have a lot of clients own that. I don't recommend it for everyone, especially if you have a lot of health issues and you're going to be at the doctor a lot, but it certainly is a good program for folks that have a, you know, pretty good health um, situation. And it also covers Part D, which is next. And Part D, D stands for? Drugs. Dr- drugs. Very good. Yep. See, that one works. That one works. That, that actually so, <laughs> works, yeah. That's right. Maybe the only So that's your, that, that's your drug coverage. So yeah. if you don't have the Advantage program, which covers A, B, and D, uh, then if you just got A and B, you have to pick up D as in drug as well, and that's going to cover, you know, this, uh, again. And you can pick all kinds. You know, you go on, go on a website, and these are – uh, you know, got different programs that cover different drugs. If, if you're on something long term, you might want to make make sure it's covered and how is it covered and and things of that nature. So you can see, even though we're going through the simplicity of, of our discussion today, it gets it, you can get in the weeds. Oh, with this stuff, you can. Right? Well, first of all, you called it the ABCs of Medicare and now we're oh. on to D. So it really should have been the ABCDs of retirement. Well, actually, All right. there's more oh, letters Medicare. to come. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so that's that's the privatized. I'm sorry, and and then you get into after that, you get in what we used to call the Medigap or the Medicare supplements. Oh. And so this is what comes in if you don't have an Advantage C. Okay, if you have A and B and D, then you get a supplement. And this covers some of those bigger deductibles and copays, and they have a uh, they have a plan F G K L M N. And they're all consistent across the U.S. So, and across every private company that offers these. So, again, if you go to Blue Cross and buy their supplement, if you buy G as in Ghost, it's going to have the same coverage as every other company's G plan, okay, uh, as mandated by the government. However, it could cost different. So G from Blue Cross might be cheaper than G from Humana or whatever. And so that's, again, where you need to kind of get into this shopping mentality. And that's why I don't like our clients. I prefer them coming to us and letting us shop all the companies as opposed to going to AARP, which has one company they, they sponsor, or going to, you know, seeing a commercial and it's one company, it's Humana. Because you don't know for your area uh, which company might be best for your area. Plus, you don't know what plan might be better for you individually. So you really need more of a consulting uh, situation for that as well. So so as you, typically, as you go down from, from F through G all the way through N, the coverage tends to get better and better. So the Cadillac, uh, Cadillac tends to be, you know, the M and the N. And so I've got a client, they're in their mid to late 80s, and they I think they have N. I think they've got the most coverage you can get. Um, and it's like I think they pay like seven or eight hundred dollars a month for both oh, of them, both of them. Wow. Yeah, but they don't pay a dime anywhere else. Wow. And they're at the doctor three times a week, and and they may be getting test lab tests done over here, and they're sure. going over here, and wow, or transported to the hospital. I mean, all this because they're really really getting uh, in bad health as as they get into their late late eighties, and so having that Cadillac plan, they may pay 800 bucks a month for it, but they don't, again, they don't pay anything else. They know what's coming out of pocket. It's practically zero. Uh, so for them, you know, perfect choice uh, in their situation. So again, it's, it's just like retirement planning. You can't take a cookie cutter approach. You've got to look at the entire situation, you know, so that's, that's why we approach it that way. Well, I think that's great, and, and and it's important for people to understand that you can get into the weeds, like you said, on Medicare, and there's a lot more to it than just, oh, when I turn 65, I'm on Medicare, don't need to worry about it. Well, and there are things Medicare does not cover that you need mm-hmm. to plan for, like a lot of people think Medicare covers long-term care, right? But it doesn't. Right, that's what, exactly. It covers the first 30 to 60 days of skilled nursing home care. 
But after that, you're on your own, you know. And even if you have a long-term care policy, that typically they have a 90-day waiting period, maybe longer. And, and so that could be a lot of money out of pocket. So just, again, have a plan. Have a health care yeah. plan. That's part of retirement yeah. planning is health care planning. And, and, you know, you can go down, uh, you know, go down to Schwab or Fidelity or Edward Jones and whatever and say, uh, what kind of Medicare should I be looking at? And they'll look at you like you're from another planet. You know, you're, you're in the wrong place because yeah. they're not looking at retirement planning. They're looking at, at investing only. So it's yeah. got to be part of it because just like we talk a lot about taxes, uh, uh, Tony, that taxes will have an effect. Yet most investment people don't talk about taxes and the effect on retirement. So you need that whole holistic approach, which is why we are just so busy because people are looking for that. They didn't realize it existed until the last few years. And now they're making that, um, uh, you know, that um, step upward to get, the, you know, more help because once you reach age 50 to 55, you need to start talking about retirement planning, not investment planning. It's got to be the whole the whole picture. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it is interesting too, Mark, because uh, Medicare also, three of the big things that people have issues with when uh, you're a senior or in retirement are hearing, vision, and dental, right? Those are three mm-hmm. things that kind of start to have problems as we get older, uh, but yet none of those three things are covered by Medicare, correct? Not not hardly at all. I I think you might be able to pick up some kind of a supplement or maybe even an additional supplement that might cover some of that, but it's it's not cheap and it doesn't cover everything. It's most, you know, think about dental. You know, a crown's what, two grand or whatever it is, and, 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 you know, it might cover half of that or whatever. Sure. Let me tell you about something else. Probably one of the biggest ones is uh, the coverage D for drug. Uh, as we talked about earlier, it's there's a lot of things it doesn't cover. I've got clients throw medicine that's 2000 a month, and, and that's out of pocket. And that's Medicare not covered by cover. Part D? Mm-hmm. Not not in not in some because maybe it's a new drug that hasn't been approved yet, uh, and you know how slow sure. the government can be on that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. So, um, I had one client. I think I've told the story before that it was two thousand a month. So what she did was she only took one every other day. She couldn't afford to take any more, and 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 what she had was something that was really needed it every day. And so I mean I it made, it broke my heart when I heard that. And 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 so again the planning for for, for things like that we like to create a, a healthcare bucket, uh, Tony. And what that is is it's an account that we just leave alone. We put over here, uh, it might, might be bucket six, and that's our long-term growth bucket. We let it ride because we know over the, over the next 15 to 20 years, um, we put it in a, a nice uh, moderate portfolio that's going to earn, you know, uh, 7 to 10% a year. And so that within 12, 15 years, it's doubled, maybe doubled twice. And now they've got their own health care bucket over there. And we also recommend if your company offers it, an HSA, a health savings account. Um, And that's only offered to folks, uh, first of all, your company has to offer it. Secondly, you have to have a high deductible health plan. And I believe it's a $5,000 deductible or more uh, to qualify for an HSA. But what's cool about an HSA is the money goes in tax-free, it grows tax-free, and it comes out tax-free as long as you're spending it on health care. So it's it's like a Roth and an IRA all bundled into one. And the only restriction is health care. Well, gosh. You know, you're going to use it somewhere down the road, right? And so I've got clients that, uh, you know, we've been real aggressive on that. They might have $100,000 in their HSA. uh, And we're just growing it tax-free until, you know, the later health care years, and and they can start using it. So another really powerful tool that most people won't tell you about, you know, and and maybe you work for a company that offers it, but you don't realize how effective it is. So, uh, again, another reason to contact us and say, hey, tell me about this HSA and, and how can I get that or tell me about Medicare, it's time for me to sign up. I don't want to make a mistake, things of that nature. And we'll get our Medicare person on the phone together with you and I and and go through the steps and kind of see what might be best, uh, you know, for your individual situation. Yeah, and that's important. Well, you know what? This has been a a great discussion today. Is there anything else you want to add before we go? Well, I just need to tell people how to find us. Yes. Okay. Not that we're lost, but um, <laughs> uh, we we want them to know where we're at. So the most powerful way is to go to our, our website. You can learn more there. You can um, 
uh, pull up uh, you know, some, uh, some great uh, videos. Uh, you can take a link to YouTube and see some great educational videos there. Um, we've got about 75 podcasts of our radio show out there, probably in your pocket right now, Tony, if you have a cell phone that's semi-smart. Um, we're, um, so you can also go to the website and just push this little button and say, I want to meet with Mark and my calendar will open up right there and you could just pick a time that's convenient for you. Awesome. Uh, so the website, which is masterplanretire.com, masterplanretire.com. If you're somewhere that, um, maybe it's not convenient, you can also text, text the word master plan to the number 21,000. 21000 is the number. The word you put in the blank is master plan, and our contact information will pop up. Uh, every possible way to contact us would come up there. So uh, masterplanretire.com is a great place, and the word master plan, all one word, to the number 21,000, two great ways, ways to reach us. And we are offering complimentary ICs, whether it be about, uh, I'm sorry, IC consultations. That's our, that's our in-office uh, um, little uh, acronym there. But our complimentary meetings with me, one-on-one, uh, I'll give you up to 30, 45 minutes if it's important and if it's uh, some things you got to talk about. Uh, and it's whatever, whether it be Medicare, whether it be uh, IRAs, taxation, investments, health care planning, tax, whatever it may be, um, that time is yours. And that's something we offer as well as a copy of my book, uh, The Road Less Traveled. So that's our offer this week and uh, take advantage of it. All right. Thanks. And listeners, that does it for today's episode of Retirement Roadmap Radio with our host, Mark Fricks. And glad you joined us today. And again, don't, don't forget there are podcasts of past shows all over the place out there. But in the meantime, until we meet again, plan well and prosper. Have a great day, everybody. <music>